In this Singscape tutorial, we'll learn how to give a distressed look to a text logo. To begin, let's switch to the Circles and Ellipses tool and create a circle by holding Ctrl as we drag. We want to give this a black stroke by shift clicking the black swatch down here, and we want to turn off the fill by clicking the red X. Now let's open the Fill and Stroke dialog with this button up here, and let's switch to the Stroke Style tab and increase the stroke width a bit. That should be good. Now let's switch to the select tool. And let's duplicate the circle with Ctrl D, then hold Shift and Ctrl and scale it down some. Okay, and let's decrease the stroke width of this one. Next, let's switch to the text tool here and click in the canvas. I'll type the word distressed. Now let's switch to the select tool, hold Ctrl and scale this up. We can also switch to the text tool and change the font family if we want, but I'll leave mine on Cambria. Now let's go back to the select tool, duplicate this with Ctrl D and move it over here. Then we can double click it to get to the text tool, and I'll change this one to the word effect. Now we want to put these two text objects in between these circles and make them follow the curvature of the circles. To do this, let's switch to the select tool, and let's duplicate the inner circle, then hold Ctrl and Shift and scale it up so it's slightly bigger than the inner circle. Now let's shift click the first text object here. Let's go to text, put on path. So the problem we get right now is that the bottom left of the text is snapping to the circles node here. We want it so the bottom center of the text snaps to the node. To do this, let's press Ctrl Z to undo. Then let's deselect everything. Double click the text object to get to the text tool. And let's set the text alignment up here to center. Now we can switch to the select tool. Shift click the circle and go to text, put on path. It's now centered at this node. And to get it up here, we can deselect, then select the circle and click it again to get the rotation handles. Hold control and rotate it clockwise six times. Okay, let's click the circle again to get back to the scale handles. And let's temporarily turn off the stroke by shift clicking the red X down here. Now we can hold Ctrl and Shift and scale the circle up or down into the text is where we want it. Then let's Shift click a swatch here to turn the stroke back on. We now want to turn this text object into a path by selecting it and going to Path, Object to Path. It's now no longer connected to the circle. For the other text object, we actually want to put it inside the circle, instead of outside it like the top one. To do this, first we need to turn the circle into a path by going to Path, Object to Path, then we need to reverse the direction of his nodes by going to Path, Reverse. Let's select the text object, and let's double click it and make sure we set the alignment to center. Then switch to the Select tool, shift click the circle, and go to Text, Put on Path. We can then select just the circle and rotate it while holding Control until the text is at the bottom. Then click the circle again to get the scale handles. Turn off the stroke and resize it as needed. Let's turn the stroke back on. Select the text object, then go to Path, Object to Path. And now we can delete the circle. Let's create another text object to put in the center. I'll go with the word text for this one. For the font family, something with wide letters is going to look best. I'll choose Montserrat. And I'm going to make the style heavy. Now let's switch to the select tool, hold control and scale this up a lot. Let's put it about where we want it. Then let's shift click one of the circles and open the align and distribute dialog with this button. Let's make sure we have last selected chosen in the relative to box. Let's align these vertically and horizontally. I'm going to select just the text object, then hold Ctrl and Shift and scale it down some. Next, we want to cut out some of the circles around the text so they're not touching it. First, let's select both circles and go to Path, Stroke to Path. Then let's create a rectangle over the text and extending beyond the circles on both sides. Let's turn off the stroke 
I'm going to give it a red fill and also lower the opacity to about 50% so we can see everything. Let's switch to the select tool and shift click one of the circles, then align them horizontally. Now we can select just the rectangle, hold shift, and drag one of these center handles at the bottom or top to scale it if necessary. Now we want to duplicate this rectangle with the control D, then shift click one of the circles and go to path difference. Now let's select the other rectangle, shift click the other circle, and go to path difference. Okay, next we're going to use the jitter nodes extension to roughen up the paths of the center text. So first, let's select it, then turn the letters into paths by going to path, object to path, ungroup the paths by clicking this button, and turn them into a single path by going to path, union. Now let's switch to the node tool here, select all the nodes with control A, and click this insert new nodes button up here three or four times. Let's switch to the select tool and go to extensions, modify path, jitter nodes. Let's go ahead and check live preview here. Okay, so first I'm going to change the distribution type here to Gaussian. Then check both of these options. Now we can play with the maximum displacement values until we get the effect we want. I'd say that looks about right. Now I'll click apply and close this out. We're now going to add a texture to this to give it a grungy look. I'm going to add the texture to just the center text in the two circles. So I'm going to shift click the circles. And I'll turn these all into a single path by going to path union. Now let's import a texture by going to file import. I'm going to import this scratched wall texture here. If you want to use this same texture, I put a link to it in the description, but any scratchy texture should work fine. All right, I'll double click this to import it, click OK here, and scale this up so it'll cover everything. I'm going to zoom out some by holding Control and scrolling down the mouse wheel, and I'm going to pan by pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. Let's move this over here for now. Now we want to turn this texture into a path, which we can do with the trace bitmap dialog. So let's go to path, trace bitmap. Let's go ahead and click this update button here to see what the result will be. That's a little too much, so I'm going to lower this brightness threshold setting here. Maybe a little more. Okay, that should work. Let's click apply. All right, now we have this vectorized version of the texture. We can go ahead and close out the trace bitmap dialog, and we can delete the texture image. Now let's move this one on top of the logo. We can scale it some more if we want. Okay, I think that should be good. So I'm going to zoom in and shift click the circle, then go to path difference. All right, the logo part is finished. And if we want, we can add a grainy background to it. First, let's select all of this. Let's group it with Control G. Now let's switch to the squares and rectangles tool and create a rectangle over this. Let's raise the opacity all the way up. And I'm going to give it an off-white fill. Let's go to the fill and stroke dialog and switch to the fill tab. I'm going to make this a bit less saturated. Now let's switch to the select tool and click this button up here to put the rectangle beneath the logo. Then let's shift click the logo, switch to the align and distribute dialog, and center these vertically and horizontally. To give the background a grainy appearance, we can use the noise fill filter. First, let's select just the rectangle, duplicate it with control D, then click this button up here again to put it below the logo. Let's go to filters, overlays, noise fill. Let's go ahead and check live preview. I'm going to change the type here to turbulence, and I'll play around with these settings until I get something that looks good. All 
Okay, I like how that looks, but it's a little too dark. So I'm going to switch to the Noise Color tab, and I'll leave the color on black, but I'll lower the alpha channel down a lot. Now I'll click Apply and close this out. Okay, so that's how we can create a distressed text logo effect in Inkscape. I hope you found this useful, and as always, thanks for watching. <music>